the people who run ICF, uh, who trained them, I wonder? That's a good question, Wim, if I can jump in there. ICF was created around 1995 with a, with a bunch of coaches coming together. But it is kind of a good question, you know, who's training them, but they do have pretty stringent criteria, which is continually changing as well. They, got, they kind of got closed in China because some of the Chinese uh, associations were apparently not up, were, were kind of cheating the system a bit. So the ICF is updating a lot, making it harder and harder for people to falsify and to cheat the system. But who's training them? I guess they're training themselves at the highest level. Hi there, Adrian here. And this is a video from a Zoom session that we do. We do these Zoom sessions every Sunday and we take questions and answers from the audience, some of our students, some of our members. We never know what questions are coming up, so I'm always excited to do these sessions and I hope to see you at one of them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below and check out the other playlists that we have. Thank you, enjoy. If you, sorry, if you go back to this ICF model, yeah. Um, where do you implement the NLP? You had this 11 points. Where do you implement it? Can you? Yeah, so NLP you can share in several areas. Building trust from the beginning when you're discussing with a client already. In many steps, it's building trust with mirroring, leading and pacing. It's coaching presence and active listening because active listening with understanding the word patterns, seeing that uh, how the client is moving, seeing whether or feeling that the words the client is saying, the body movements, the facial expressions, do they fit, do they not fit, is there any congruency? Powerful questions, for example, ask the question in the same Vakok, Vakok uh, way, it's an auditive question or it's a um, question for, for seeing, it's a visual question or it's a feeling question. So there's a lot of ways how we can use NLP. If there's an answer, you can you look for the eye patterns, how the coachee gives the answer and can also understand how the coachee is given an answer. So in my opinion, there are a lot of ways how we can bring an NLP to this, uh, to this coaching model. Awareness, you can connect with um, or they're asking questions. You can connect, for example, with the uh, meta model so that you can ask more specific questions. Awareness, you can create with the Ericsson model, with the Milton model, so that the client can bring his own ideas to define what he wants to do. So there are a lot of ways how to use NLP as a very good base in this ICF model. I think, yes, I cannot tell you where you can exclude it. If I think about it, sometimes, of course, subconsciously I'm using NLP, but if I um, think about the 11 steps, I think I can use it everywhere. Accountability, I can use anchoring. Goal setting, mm -hmm. I can use the congruency. So even when I'm not master practitioner, with my... NLP practitioner, I can really think about a lot of ways how to use it for coaching. Um, I, I certainly yes. respect the, uh, the ICF coaching model, and I think it's very useful for people who need specific steps. But I think what they've done, they've actually taken NLP and rehashed it to fit their model, um, which is no problem because so many ways of, uh, uh, of doing NLP and also yeah. helping other people. Um, so, so for me, it wouldn't work because it's just too structured. But for many people, it will work because it is structured. So, you know, fine, whatever fits the individual, I think, really. That's my opinion. I think it's good for China. China is very flexible, sometimes following the rules, sometimes not following the rules. Most important is find, finding a result. So I, I agree. Sometimes I follow the model. If I make a test, I have to follow it. But finally... Most important is that the client has a positive result, which he wants. Mm. I think that's most important. Yeah, I'd like to comment here as a practitioner, having done 
more of NLP and hypnosis before embarking on the ICF certification journey. I do find it a bit challenging at times to sort of fit in that box of 11 with 11 dimensions. I think we have, we have a good summary that sharing experience is okay when it's done in the right way with the right intention. And I think ICF model is a good way also to support, but it should not be taken as 100% granted every time. Because for me, it's also interesting when I talk with some ICF coaches that try to share experience or I try to go out of some model that I said, but this is not ICF standard. Sometimes if you want to provoke a person or if you want to shake a person a little bit, you can also be a little bit directive if you have the intention that the coachee thinks about what he is doing, that the coachee finds his own way. If somebody is too lazy, I sometimes also give them a direction that they're destroying their life. If they are too lazy and that they should really start not change their life, otherwise they will not do a change. Not allowed an ICF model at all, but people think about it. And if they really come to a change, I think that's uh, what I what what was really my target. Boom! You made it here. Good on you. Make sure you click the subscribe button below and check out the playlist at the end. If you'd like to come along to our Sunday sessions where we host a live free Q and A for our students and members, you're welcome. I'll see you there.